Today's video, we're fortunate enough to have a 2004 Jeep Wrangler that Ryan's dad owns compared to his 2024 Jeep Wrangler Sport that we have. Now, it's kind of ironic that we do have 20 years worth of a difference here, and you can see a lot of changes have made in two decades. In today's video, we're going to talk about some of the trim options that came on the TJ, trim options on the JL, the overall exterior look of both of these Jeeps, the interiors, and then kind of my personal views on why each of these hold a very special spot in either a daily driver or a vehicle that you want to have fun with. Now, like I just mentioned, this is a 2004 Jeep Wrangler Sport. And back then, the Sport trim was actually an upgrade from the base SE. So this actually came with a couple more features. I can already see in the console there, it does have the subwoofer and amplifier. But back in the TJ days, which were produced from 1997 to 2006, there were a lot more trim options that you could buy. And like I say frequently on this channel, there were a lot of trims that really gave you a lot more bang for your buck. I was just telling Ryan, the Willys trim, when they had it back in the TJ, actually came with camouflage seats. The the dark green exterior, a dark green soft top that was specific to the Willys trim, and then specialty badging and wheels throughout the vehicle. That's a big bang for your buck when you actually get a trim. If you guys remember back to the movie Tomb Raider, they had a Tomb Raider edition in the billet silver. I mean, you had the LJs that were the longer wheelbase TJ. You could get Rubicons, Saharas, Freedom Editions, Columbia Editions, even a very limited run of the Ruby Hera, they called it. It was a Rubicon Sahara LJ, which came in the khaki color, and those were one of 1,000, you had a lot more trims, a lot more additions, and when they made them, they made them a little bit more special. Now, this Jeep is powered by what's arguably one of the best engines to ever be put into a Jeep or Wrangler vehicle, the 4-liter inline 6. Now, this produces a ton of torque, and it is one of the most reliable engines. They're easy to work on. You can beat the snot out of them, and they just keep running. It's an iron block, a very heavy-duty engine. Now, this one is also backed up. It's got completely stock suspension on it. This vehicle was in Alaska for quite some time. That's where Ryan's dad was using it and that's kind of the cool thing is that we now have it back to Pennsylvania we can work on it maybe modify it a little bit and the cool thing that Ryan and I actually touched upon a little bit in the beginning of this video is these really bring me back to like my high school days when this is all we could get this is all we could afford was a TJ we would get them we would build them up throw them whatever cheap Casey lights we had laying around or kind of rummage through not Facebook marketplace at the time those would be like yard sales or, or junkyard finds to throw cool new parts onto your Jeep but now these TJs have been around for such a long Long time that the replacement parts are all over the place the service parts are all over the place and these are actually more affordable dare i say than to work on a brand new one if you need rotors and pads a light bar even new seats new dash pads new wipers i mean even parts for under the hood you can find them anywhere. And these make for fun projects to, and they're easy to work on as well. But that's kind of the overview of this one here. It is in the nice black color. You didn't see too many black TJs. I would say that these were a little bit more rare, but the way you can tell it's an 04, the trail rated badges are put on here. That started in 03 with the Rubicon. And then also the seats in the 03s they started, they made the seats a lot taller. So those are kind of just two hints there for it. Now, if you guys aren't new to the channel, you know that we have a 2024 JL in the Anvil clear code. And this is obviously a very good looking Jeep and they've been producing these since 2018. The cool thing about the 2024 is that it does have a refresh to it, and this one does have the complete refresh on the interior and the exterior of the vehicle. Now, the JL, starting in 2018, was the redesigned and refreshed look of the Wrangler. This is a drastic change, and at first, I honestly got to say, I didn't really like it. I thought that the windshield was way too far leaned back. There was a lot of changes that made it look a little bit cheaper, but after a first year of being able to modify them, I really started to enjoy the JL, as well as the capabilities on the interior and the functional upgrades, both underneath the hood and and underneath the vehicle. Now this is a two door here and we do have the 2.0 liter turbo, which is only a four cylinder. And if you guys had a TJ back in the day, you know you didn't want the four cylinder. They made a decent amount of power. Decent is a very heavy quote word to say, but they were just underdogs when you got over 100,000, 150,000 miles and you swapped on larger wheels and tires. Fast forward a few years or 20 years in the future, this four cylinder turbo will walk circles around even that inline six next to this. Now the cool thing about this Jeep is that we did see a lot of functional upgrades, both both on the axles, the engine, the interior and the exterior. So guys, just looking at the front end, I wanna kind of focus on the exterior differences that we do see. Obviously the seven slot grill is here and the TJ did have the round headlights, huge controversy coming from the YJ that had square headlights from 87 to 95, but this is still very stock up front. You still got your cover plate here, stock bumper, the bump rets and the OE fog lights. We do have these small little tow hooks here that are capable, but they only bolted in from the top two bolts. Now the ones that we currently have on go onto a front frame horn and mount with four bolts on either side 
side and give you guys a lot more power. Now, the nice thing with this too, as well, is that when you're looking at this Jeep, we really have a lot of cool things going on with it. So the front end is a lot more narrow when it comes to the grill size. You can see that with the grill, we're overall a lot less wide than the grill on Ryan's Jeep. And then the fenders here are steel to plastic. This is a lot more durable. This is all steel going on the side here. And Ryan's is kind of just the plastic edge. Now there's problems and pros and cons of both of them. But overall, this is the classic look here. And this is what Jeep still had. You can still see the protrusion from the grill is a few inches, but there, that's the front end of this TJ. And a lot has changed going over to the 24. Now, just checking out the front of this Jeep, you can see just how much wider the front grill is. And that's because this grill had to replace the section of steel that you actually had on the fender of the old TJ. And they've replaced it with these much larger fenders that are just completely all in plastic. And unfortunately, due to that weight savings that you needed by adding all the other things into the Jeep, that's a common thing you're going to find throughout here is just plastic. Now, fortunately, all these companies that have been building parts have been building them for a long time. So there are a ton of aftermarket front bumpers, aftermarket steel fenders, a lot of ways to replace that plastic, give you some more durable ways. And if you get the Rubicons, you can still get the steel bumpers, but they are an option versus just getting them back on the TJ. Those came on everything. You had steel front and rear bumpers, no matter what trim you got, even the base all had steel front and rear bumpers. Now on the front end, like we said, a lot more functional upgrades. The seven slot is a little bit more subdued now that we do have the vents in between them but on the 2018 to 2023 JLs it was a little bit more prominent I gotta say I am a fan of the 2024 grills and I know a lot of you guys are probably gonna hate that but it's a good thing that these are interchangeable but just a little bit of change when it comes to the actual seven slots these are a lot more wider because they had to fill up a lot larger of a gap on the TJ those hoods were heavy but when you got the wind underneath them those hoods would flutter and that's because on the center section was a rubber strap and after a long time it would stretch out or in the summer heat rubber gets looser and it would strap and that hood you could watch kind of flutter down the highway these are now a lot more durable with springs and actual steel on the inside here it's plastic border but these are going to hold the hood down a lot better still keep the same cow bump out on the hood though just a little bit less prominent and it gives it a lot more structural strength on my jeep i have the rubicon hood which was arguably the best thing that they've ever done is giving them the vents but these still do look very nice and one big argument some guy said that the jk's didn't have the cow panels that were color matched they were. The TJ's had them that were color matched. The JK's had them. The YJ's had them. And now Ryan's does because he has distinction applied. So, and I hope I'm not boring you if you've checked out this Jeep, but if this is your first time stopping by the channel, thank you for watching and make sure to watch all of our old previous videos to see how we build them all up. So here you go, guys, the four liter straight inline six engine that we've got under the hood. A lot more real estate to work with underneath here. I remember personally, I had an ARB compressor mounted on that side. That's where the actual battery tray went for the right hand drive trims. And this is just much, much simpler and easier to work on here even with the four liter these were super reliable engines and they were just easy to find parts for easy to work on and you knew if you had an issue and you could pretty much diagnose it very easily just by looking at it this is what i was talking about when i said more weight there is a lot more going on under the engine bay of the 2024 wrangler compared to the tj that we just looked at and that tj i still had room for a compressor down below i could easily work on both sides of the engine and i didn't have this giant battery the auxiliary battery and that huge fuse box plus the intakes tube is probably half the size of this but you've got everything still tightly compacted in here and there's a little bit more for room but this is what i say when i talk about more tech in the jeeps it takes up more space but it gives us a lot more features on the inside so still the 2.0 liter with a nice little turbo over here on this side and kicks around this two-door a lot quicker than 20 years ago so on the side obviously on these jeeps a lot flatter of body panels you can basically see from the tail end here all the way to the front it is just one flat sheet of steel compared to the jl which as we found out has a ton of of curvature to it. Now, one thing I do like that they've incorporated back into the JL was this detent on the factory full doors on both the CJ, YJ, and the TJ. The JL, they actually kind of incorporated up here a little bit and a little higher that we'll see on Ryan's Jeep, but it gives it just a little bit more dramatic effect. And also I would say it just kind of breaks up the panel and I know it, it makes the panel stronger than just being one flat sheet of steel, which would easily dent and ding. This gives it a little bit more to kind of grab onto. You didn't see too many of these with full doors. I remember all of mine had factory half doors so that was probably an option that he added on either whoever ordered this from the factory put the full doors on here but an easy way too to tell 04 or 03 and newer have this style of mirror the 03 and older had the same as the cj and the yj so a very simple exterior on here but overall still the clean look the only thing we're missing on the jl is this little cover here so we don't have these anymore we just have 
front and rear fender flares, all the TJs had those kind of side extensions. So looking at the side of this Jeep, one of the biggest things that you'll notice is once again, these doors are a lot bigger than the TJ. They don't have the filler panel that came off of the fender flare. And then a big change on the 24 as they give you another trail rated badge on this side because the antenna is now actually located in the windshield. That was a drastic change even for me. I love the Bronco antenna that we swapped into our Jeep, but this does give it a much cleaner look and it's uniform on both sides. The other thing to note is that these front fenders are a lot longer. So this almost the fender flare goes about as long as the entire fender section on here. And the other thing too on the TJ as I'm now looking at it is this section is actually broken up into two parts in the TJ. You basically have a line right here that's your front fender and then this line is part of the body. So you have this is connected to the body here. The front fender is the entire way back and then ends down here. So a little bit different and kind of some things that you notice when you're looking at them back and forth. The cool thing with this JL though, after 20 years, they've made these actually easier to fold the windshield down than it was the TJ. On the TJ, you actually had to unbolt the front section of the roll cage here to flip your windshield down. And it was a lot more cumbersome to do. They kind of went away from that cool factor of being able to fold it down. And then the JK, man, you had to rip apart everything to get that down. With the JL, it's four bolts. You pull off your wiper blades and you can flip this down and you still have the full roll cage behind the windshield. That's one neat thing on the JL is with a little bit more plastic on the outside, the roll cage up top connects from this side to the other. And even if you fold the windshield down, you still have a fully boxed section. On the TJ, you didn't have that. So a little bit less safe, but you still have a lot more steel on those too. But overall on the side though, very common to it. I would say though, this is very similar to the TJ. I'm kind of looking at it, just the distance between the rear of the door. The real big change was up here. So they've added a lot more space in these doors compared to that TJ next to us. So the other thing too with the older TJs, the tubs were a lot less tall than the new JLs. You can see here that this is the top of the tub right to the bottom and it's just not that tall. You know, in the JLs, we got a lot more height on the interior, which gives you more interior space and overall makes the vehicle bigger. But with these, the tub's very tiny and then you can see that the soft top is almost one and a half times the size. So much different than what we're currently seeing where the proportions would in the 2024 a little bit more proportional. So about the same as the body to the actual top. Tailgates are very simple here. They all had these old school latches and then Ryan actually still has the key on his because he didn't upgrade to any power windows or power locks. But yeah, rear end, very simple. Utilitarian was the name of the game for these Jeeps. And these are trailer taillights. So if you guys have ever gone behind a tractor trailer, even the uh, kind of moving trailers or moving trucks around town, that's what these are for. So you can literally buy them anywhere. And that's what came stock. Super simple layout. It's DOT approved. And if you ever needed to replace a lens, a bulb or anything, you could stop at kind of any store in the world and find these taillights. That's why these were so utilitarian and so simple. So now as we move on to the back of the Jeep, obviously a lot of things have stayed similar, but uh, most of them have been updated. The tops are so much easier on these to actually swap out, get them removed, get everything kind of placed the way you want it to. And then also there are no zippers on the current JL tops. On the TJs, if you guys ever tried to swap those out when it was a little bit cold out, you were fighting those zippers. They would pop off, they would bust, they would break. They would do all sorts of crazy stuff. This, there's no more zippers, so a heck of a lot easier. And they've actually reinforced these with plastic underneath. So this is a lot more sturdy and gives you the full safari top compared to the TJ where if you pulled out those back windows, you still had this complete section that was stayed there. Tail lights, obviously updated. And we did swap ours out with the diode dynamics. The factory ones look reminiscent of that, but they still do curve around the side. Hinges are updated, but the biggest thing that I like is the proportions are still correct. The tub has gotten bigger on the JL. However, it's not cumbersome. I look at the Bronco and I see the tub is like up to here and the top is like this little section. The JL is very proportional and I really like that. And I think that's what it makes them look so good when the top and doors are off. In this, we do have backup camera, which is a lifesaver. I still drive my old trucks without a backup camera. Same thing though, on the back plastic bumpers. Don't worry about these too much because we're gonna replace everything, but that's kind of the difference you see, a little bit more plastic used, and we'll see how this all holds up over the years. I would dare I say this would be easier to hold up over the years just because you might have to clean it up a little and make it with back to black, but no steel bumpers from the factory. You gotta add those on from either aftermarket or put the Mopar steel ones on. The interiors of these Jeeps are once again, something that's very nostalgic to me. You felt very connected and close to your environment, I would say in these. And that's just because the seams were so much smaller. Even the A-pillar, just how narrow this was, you could really see everywhere that you wanted to, especially with the doors off. And then even in the earlier TJs, there wasn't as much trim work around here. So they were even tighter than this. The other thing that I would say is the windshields are a lot more vertical and give you a lot more viewing area than having 
having more curvature to them like they currently do in the 2024. The one thing though that engineers got it right on the 2024 is they went away from this kind of center cluster style. Now after the YJ from 87 to 95, they introduced this center cluster style in the TJ where you basically had all of your controls here, your two vents, and then on this side you had your instrument cluster. But it kind of broke up what the original CJs, what the Willys Jeeps look like. They had a flat dash and everything was kind of laid out across it. This gave it this kind of center protrusion. And then when the JK came out, the first 07 JKs had this very, very protruded center section that was gray and had flat sides to it. Honestly, it just didn't look that good. They redesigned it in 2012 and gave it a little bit more of a less obvious one. But then when they designed the JL, they gave it more of a flat transition across of it. So they gave it more of that kind of flow and Ryan could even get a shot from here, just how far this protrudes out a few inches. One thing I did want to note though, this looks very similar to Ryan's vents below his 2024, which weren't the circular ones that I have in the center. So these look, look very close and heck who knows, Jeep might have even used the same parts on there. The other thing Ryan noted too, and I will agree, a lot of these parts in the TJs, especially the physical and metal parts, they do feel a lot more beefy. Even the turn signal stalk, everything feels like it's just a little bit tighter. It's a little bit more heavy duty. And that's probably due to modern plastics, modern construction. You're trying to get it cheaper. You're trying to produce them a little bit more. But the interior of the TJ is very, very cozy to me. Everything is so, it's just all right here. It's it's so small, but it's all that you need. And it's right at kind of a quick hands grasp. You can change your radio. This is a single den, so it has been replaced from the factory, but that's what you did if you wanted to listen to Bluetooth or USB or have any modern features in here, you would swap that out. Simple roll cage on here, simple, very tiny visors up top this is just what i love to see and yeah good looking interior here probably could use a detail we got to detail this jeep and get it on the channel right so now obviously the interiors are going to be updated after 20 years but the coolest thing is is that this is the latest revision of the jl which means that it got all the brand new interior the cool thing is on these jeeps is that now all of them come with the 12.3 inch uconnect 5 which is the massive screen in the center and then on the inside you still do have the analog tachometer and your analog speedometer but a nice lcd display in the center the other thing Thing is Ryan did opt for the automatic transmission because I think we'd probably be waiting another six or eight months for the manual. And there's some people saying that I'm dogging the manual. I'm not dogging the manual, guys. Ryan was going to order one. I loved our manual JL that we had, but if you can't get them, it's hard for a channel like this to continue to produce content without having a vehicle in stock. We love the manual and we hope that it stays, but Jeep's got to kind of figure it out. I digress with that. The interior on this one though feels a little bit more reminiscent of the TJ because this is protruding out again. This center section on my my current JL, my 2022, is more flush and the screen is kind of flat with this. This is protruding out a little bit more and then the vents are now also rectangular in the center. So are we kind of going back to what that looked like? I would say a little bit more. This is protruding out and you can see even the start button is now about an inch and a half in there. But the seats, everything, the ride, all more comfortable in the modern JL and a lot more safety features. This has now full side curtain airbags for the front and the rear, full airbags in the dash, airbag in the center here. And that's what you're really looking at for the safety aspect of it. The TJs are going to be great for daily drive driving, putting around town, but I wouldn't want to drive that a few thousand miles if I didn't have to, but I probably would. Who knows me? I'd rip off the top and just drive it. Jeep's come a long way, and I'm glad that they finally put everything starting even on the base models. They didn't kind of make you go up to a super high trim to get a very nice interior, and we've got a nice interior in this 24. Now, some closing thoughts on the TJ. As you go around this Jeep, you really do feel how much it has changed over the years just by knocking on the hood, knocking on the cow panel on the corners. They're sturdier. They're more refined when it came to the actual structural strength of the Jeep. You can see the cow panel up here raised, gave it a lot more rigidity to the hood compared to these modern models. And I would say the JK actually felt cheaper than the new JL. The JL, they did refine a little bit more, but there are a lot more plastic components. And that's in order to keep the weight down, to keep the cost down, as well as you have a lot more safety equipment and comfort on the interior. And then underneath the hood, a lot more safety equipment, a lot more features, a lot more functionality. You couldn't add all this heavy duty equipment mixed with all that are unit up with a 6,000, 7,000 pound two-door Jeep. Now the TJ is a very beefy, a very strong model and something that we constantly see out when we're wheeling. This is something that we're trying to get back into. We wanted to do a full TJ or a YJ build. So let us know in the comments what model you'd like to see. We'd almost like to start off with a base like this, completely swap out the fenders, do the lift kit, do everything crazy to it, but show what a resto mod would look like on this. Cause I mean, the 97s you're talking, those are what 
26 years old right now. So they're they're getting up there in age. They're almost antique plates here in PA. So we'd like to build one up on the channel. Let us know in the comments. Now guys, obviously we're a huge fan of the 2024 JL, but in our hearts, we still love all the old Wranglers. You know, I've personally owned them. Ryan's owned them. We've run in the back of them. We've run in the front of them. We've worked on them, built them, and we have love for all the Wrangler vehicles on this channel and anything really that gets you out and starts enjoying the trail. With the JL, we're still glad to see that they are producing the two-door. That's the biggest thing for us is that although it's not a huge sector, I would argue to say that it's just a little sector of the Wrangler sales. I believe I've even heard less than 10%, but they're still producing it and there is still a demand for it. Ryan Factory ordered his and he loves this thing much more than a four-door. It's a lot easier to get in and out. It's much better wheeling, especially once we get a lift kit and wheels and tires on it. It's still a non-4XE. This doesn't have a hybrid battery. You can get it with a 3.6 liter, naturally aspirated V6, automatic or manual transmission and no 4XE in the year 2024. You can still do that and still get a Jeep vehicle that you can fold the windshields down, take the top and doors off, and I would say a lot easier than you could in the TJs. And I would say that the next round of these, which might be coming up soon because we're six years into production, is probably going to have a lot more cool features that we can't even think of yet. There's a lot of cool patents that I've seen for the JL, including water fording, air intakes that produce factory air compressed air into them. What do you guys think the future for the JL is, and what would you like to see? On today's viewer rig of the video, we are checking out Kratos JLUR. Now, he's got a 2022 Jeep Wrangler Extreme Recon with a three and a half inch JKS lift, Fox 2.0 shocks, and 37 by 15 and a half by 17 Kanadi Mudhog tires. He's got a set of the RCV front axle shafts, Synergy one ton tie rod ends, drag link, and American off road ball joint deletes. Kermali rear axle shafts from Yukon, an Evo quarter pounder front bumper. Rock Hard 4x4 Sport Cage, which is a mod that I've been looking at. And then he's got a set of the upgraded Oracle by LED headlights with the smoke taillights. Very nice looking Jeep, and I gotta say I really love the color matched rings on there, or the red accent rings. And I believe we actually met down in Tennessee. We met so many people, but he was saying that he had the brand new 2024 grill on there, and I can see that he does have it. Great looking Jeep, and thank you so much for submitting. If you guys want to have a chance at your Jeep being featured, be sure to hit us up through Instagram or send us an email. All right, guys. Well, that is going to be a wrap on today's video. And honestly, I had a ton of fun doing this. So huge props to Ryan's dad for letting us use his 2004. Check this out in person. We are planning later this month. Roush Creek is hosting Crawling for Canines, a huge wheeling event. So we want to go out and support Tina and her entire program, an organization that really helps the canines and police dogs out there. So we're going to go up there with both of our Jeeps. So if you guys are there, be sure to stop out and see us. To be determined, though, we'll put it on the community tab and let you guys know and then also we're going to take both of ours out and get the high vis out there and uh, see if we can really earn it in that we have taken it wheeling off camera but we want to film a full day of wheeling so let us know down below in the comments if that's something that you want to see a ton of cool stuff happening the shop is being done guys it takes a little bit when you're doing all this stuff on camera going all to these shows we just got all the framework we just got all the insulation we're going to be trenching it out for the electricity so by the end of this month by the beginning of november it should be painted should be finalized so if you guys have any ideas on colors or different things we should do in there let us know we didn't forget about the shop we've just been so busy this summer and fall that we're waiting until it gets cool and then we'll be utilizing that all winter so a ton of fun coming up and thank you guys so much for watching this video until next time my name is matt with dirt road cred and i want you to get out there and earn yours.